Hey everybody, it's Daniel, and welcome to another episode of the Spain to Go podcast, the best Spain podcast in the universe. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do something that is not safe for work. So if you have easily offended people around you, put on some headphones to listen to this one. Don't uh, listen to it in front of your kids unless you really want your kids to learn some Spanish profanity. I've got a new YouTube channel, and I'll probably do this as a YouTube video eventually. The YouTube channel is called Learn Spanish with Daniel, which is not a very exciting name, but I will soon be adding more stuff there. I'm teaching Spanish in general, and I'll probably make a video also about Spanish profanity over there. But today I wanted to do it on the podcast, and it'll be fun. I guess the caveat before we begin is that this is going to be Spain Spanish. I'm sure there's a lot of different things happening in a lot of different Spanish-speaking countries. When I was growing up in Arizona, close to the Mexican border, there was a lot of chinga tu madre going on. Here, nobody says anything like that. Everybody knows it because they've all heard, you know, Mexican TV shows at some point or Mexican uh, movies and they know the expressions, but um, it's not something that anybody would say over here. So we're going to talk about things that people in Spain might say. First off, the Spanish are not nearly as worried about strong language as we seem to be in the U.S. They're more open about about saying these things. When I used to work as an English teacher in companies, I would be giving. I would give uh, lessons to corporate people, and they were happy to just say cojones in the middle of a random conversation. When I was, you know, working random jobs back in the U.S., I never would have started talking to my boss about my testicles. But in uh, Spain, it's all good. So this is theoretically 10 Spanish expressions, but it's going to be more in the end by the time we've gone through a few variations on them. So, let's get started. First thing is hostia. Hostia refers to the host from the Catholic Mass, the little cracker that they eat in the Catholic Mass. But you can use it as an exclamation, which sort of, sort of means, I'm shocked. It's not really obscene in any serious way, but, you know, blasphemy is sort of frowned upon. So if you, for example, maybe you have just uh, met a beautiful Spanish woman and you, you know, you're on a date, the date goes well, you ask her to come back to your place, and one thing leads to another, and suddenly, hostia, pepita, se me ha roto el preservativo. You could say something like that. I'm shocked. Oh no, Pepita, the condom just broke. It's a, you know, thing that people say. She could respond also with hostia. Hostia, y ahora que hacemos? Hostia, just as an exclamation of surprise or shock like that. Oh no. If you're feeling a little bit more timid, you could try ostras. Ostras is oysters, technically. It just sounds close enough to hostia, to, to uh, basically fill the space there. I had a girlfriend back in the day who would not say hostia because she was a serious Catholic girl, but she had no problem saying ostras. There's a couple more things. You could say hostia puta. This is not safe for work, and if you're easily offended, you know, maybe turn this episode off. But hostia puta is just something that um, people say it's not really anything different than hostia. It's just a little bit stronger and more offensive. There's quite a few expressions with puta in them. There's also the meaning of hostia, which is te voy a dar una hostia. Dar una hostia is hit somebody. Te voy a dar una hostia. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to kick your ass. Something like that. By the way, I'll put a link to all of this in the show notes. Wherever you're listening to this, you've probably got a link to something on expatmadrid.com, my blog, so that you can 
uh, read most of this. Most of the examples I'm going to read here will be in the blog. And if you don't speak a lot of Spanish, you can see them there. It'll make it a little bit easier. Anyway, moving on, we've got number two. Que coñazo. Coñazo literally would be what a big pussy. But it means nothing like that. It just means that something's really boring or really annoying. If you're, you know, waiting in line at the police station to, to renew your ID card, you could say, Ay, que coñazo. Llevo esperando 40 minutos. This is such a pain in the ass. I've been waiting for 40 minutes. Que coñazo. Otra reunión. What a pain in the ass. Another meeting. So, coñazo. Coñazo comes from coño, supposedly, which coño is also used as an expression. It's usually an expression for emphasis or to emphasize that you're, like, angry, basically. If you want somebody to stop calling you on the phone, you could say, no me llames más, coño. Coño. Just as an exclamation like that. If you're with people who, you know, who you know well, you say, otra cerveza, coño. It's just kind of an emphatic thing. Another beer. God damn it. Something like that. You could technically use this as a part of the female anatomy, but I'm not sure I've ever heard a lot of people using it literally as a part of the female anatomy. There's a proverb, tira más un pelo de coño que un carro de bueyes. I'll do proverbs another day, but tira más un pelo de coño que un carro de bueyes is that a pussy hair pulls more weight than an ox cart. Basically, it means that men will do anything to please women, etc. So on the blog also, there's a link to an article about Spanish proverbs. There's quite a few. Anyway, like I said, nobody in my life has ever used the word coño to refer to a literal vagina, but it is an exclamation. Anyway, moving on to the next one, we have de puta madre. De puta madre. Puta is usually whore or prostitute more than bitch. I know you've probably heard that it's bitch, but it's not. De puta madre is usually a positive thing, actually. It's definitely a positive thing. If something went really well or you had a really great time, for example... If somebody says, how was the party last night? ¿Qué tal la fiesta anoche? You could say, bien, me lo pasé de puta madre. Me lo pasé de puta madre. I had a great time. A really good time. The important thing is you have to say it like you mean it. Me lo pasé de puta madre. I'm not really good at this in Spanish, so you should hear a real Spanish person saying these things. When I say it, it just sounds a little bit silly because, you know, I have my accent and all of this. Also, talking about puta, there's su puta madre, which is usually something you would say if you just, you know, smash your thumb with a hammer or something. It's nothing to do with de puta madre. Su puta madre. I guess you could maybe do tu puta madre if you're insulting somebody directly also. You know, it's one of those things. Mothers and whores and Spanish people's obsession with motherhood and prostitution and the Virgin Mary, and things like that. Anyway, that's that one. Let's move on to me cago en. Me cago en can be used with basically anything. It is I shit on or possibly in. And you can use it with a variety of things. Common is me cago en la leche. You could also say me cago en la hostia. You remember la hostia from before. So you can shit in the milk, you can shit on the host from the Catholic Mass. You can also say, me cago en tu puta madre. Another option there. I shit on your whore mother. Very friendly people, the Spanish. So all of these, me cago en, and there's also a lot of other things you can say. It just means you're angry about a situation. You can say, me cago en tus muertos. I shit on your dead. On your dead ancestors, possibly. Me cago en la mar. Technically, I think it should be el mar. But if you're already using this, you might use la mar, which is the less uh, polite way of saying the sea. 
Me cago en el mar, la mar, whatever you want. Me cago en Dios is also fairly common. I shit on God. And if you're not feeling blasphemous, but you still want to shit on something, you can say me cago en diez. Diez like the number 10, which like saying ostras instead of ostia is, you know, just a similar sounding word which replaces the one you want to say. It's like saying dag nabbit instead of saying god damn it in English. Something like that. Anyway, let's move on to Mirando Pa Cuenca. Mirando Pa Cuenca is a humorous way of saying that you're having doggy style sex. La puse Mirando Pa Cuenca. And yeah, it's um, in theory comes from one of the Spanish kings who would, you know, say to his wife that he was taking ladies up into his his private uh, laboratory so he, they could look through his telescope, you know, look through his telescope in the direction of the city of Cuenca. I don't believe that story at all. It seems ridiculous. It also might be because of the position of Muslims praying towards Mecca, but I also have my doubts about that. You know, they could just say Mirando Pa Mecca if they wanted to say that. Anyway, La Puse Mirando Pa Cuenca, you know, I put her looking in the direction of Cuenca. It just means giving it to someone doggy style. Since we're talking about sex, let's talk about a few other expressions that I've heard around town. There's mojar el churro, which is to moisten your churro. You know what a churro is probably if you've been around a while, but mojar el churro, to mojar is to get something wet. So you're moistening your churro. In, you know, the U.S., we might say you're playing hide the salami or something. Uh, one that's not really profane at all. No comerse ni una rosca. You could say no me, no me comido ni una rosca. It means you're not getting any action. Nobody wants to have sex with you. So you're not even eating one donut. I guess donut, you know, to refer to some orifice or other. And similar to Mirando Pa Cuenca, you could say La Puse a Veinte Uñas. Veinte Uñas. Um, Twenty finger and toenails. They don't, uh, like they have dedos in Spanish for fingers, and they have dedos del pie for toes. They also just use uñas for fingernails and toenails. You could differentiate by specifying, but generally just uñas are nails in general. Anyway, Cuenca is awesome and you should go there and uh, yeah, enjoy Cuenca. Let's talk about La Quinta Puñeta at this point. La Quinta Puñeta is what you say when something is very far away. Puñeta, if I recall correctly, is just like the, the cuff of a shirt. Let me pause recording really quick and Google that because I could be wrong. I don't want to give you wrong information. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, puñeta is a kind of like medieval shirt cuff. It also possibly refers to masturbation. Anyway, um, puño is fist. La quinta puñeta is just something that is really far away. And there are other ways that you can say that too. In English, actually, we would say something is in but fuck. I mean, I would, you know, all the way out in but fuck, um, meaning something that is just very, very far away in the middle of nowhere. You can actually say that in English and in Spanish. In Spanish, you can say a tomar por culo. You know, vivimos a tomar por culo in, you know, some faraway town or something like that. You can also say el quinto coño. Remember, coño from before. El quinto pino, like a pine tree, or la quinta forca. There are always a few possible explanations for where these things come in. El quinto pino being, you know, there's only five pine trees out of town. And, you know, if you go to the fifth one, you're already way uh, far away from town. El quinto pino. Uh, el quinto pino, I mean. I have no idea if these are, are real explanations, but you can find things on the internet. Anyway, yeah, so the example sentence I have is Que no me voy a la quinta puñeta para el cumple de Rafa. Joder. Sure, I might 
say that. I'm not going all the way out to the middle of nowhere for Rafa's birthday party. Shit. Joder is one that you'll see everywhere also. It technically has to do with the sexual act, but I don't think I've ever... Well, it has to do with the sexual act in a way like if you say I got fucked by, you know, the tax ministry. I got fucked by my boss out of overtime pay, something like that. You wouldn't use it to talk about the pleasurable aspects of the sexual act. You would use it to talk about getting fucked in a painful, uncomfortable, embarrassing way. So yeah, joder. Me han jodido. Anyway, there are a few uh, things about La Quinta Forca also. There are a couple of theories about La Quinta Forca. Forca is a gallows and, you know, that would be outside of town so you could hang people outside of town. Things like that are possible explanations for why we say this. Anyway, it's always with the fifth for some reason. Quinto is the ordinal number for fifth. Quinto or quinta. Next we have Bete a la mierda. Also, Bete a tomar por culo. We talked about a tomar por culo last time. It um, refers to butt sex. So in Spanish, these would both mean basically go fuck yourself. But the literal translations are more like go to the shit or go get ass fucked. You know. Very polite expressions. Don't say them in front of your Anglo-Saxon grandmother if your Anglo-Saxon grandmother speaks Spanish. Your Spanish grandmother might be fine with it. But yeah, they're just ways of telling people to go away. Way back in the day, I had a dictionary, a Spanish-English dictionary, which had colloquial expressions in it. And one thing it suggested was vete a freír espárragos. Go fry asparagus, which is apparently a lighter version of this. Anyway, uh, like I mentioned before, a tomar por culo can also mean something that is very far away. And uh, yeah, you can say, you don't really expect me to go to a tomar por culo at 8 a.m., do you? If you've lived in Spanish for long enough and you know people, you can speak Spanglish with them, you know. Lots of people do. It's the second language of many of us out here. Talking about uh, sexual acts, we haven't talked about the word follar, but follar is to fuck in a literal sense. It could talk about the, you know, pleasurable aspects of the sexual act. While we're on the topic, though, if you know the subjunctive, you could use the expression que te folle un pez. Que te folle Un pez, o que te folle un pez espada, is go get fucked by a fish. Or go get fucked by a swordfish, if you say pez espada. Um, the subjunctive, you know, I hope you get fucked by a swordfish, possibly, would be the translation, or if only a swordfish would fuck you. Que te folle un pez espada. The simpler version of this is que te follen. Que te follen is... Uh, may you be fucked, but not in a pleasurable way. Go get fucked. Go fuck yourself, basically. Que te follen. I seem to remember being a, uh, at a protest many years ago and a lot of Spanish anarchist types shouting this at the police or chanting it or possibly singing it at the police. Que te follen, no way, etc. Anyway, that's a good one. And, of course, as I mentioned... You know, follar, you can conjugate it and use it to talk about the sex act. Next we have estoy pedo or estoy trompa. These are not really profane, but I put them in here anyway. They're common expressions. Pedo is fart, literally. But if you say estoy pedo, it's I'm drunk. I'm really drunk. Estoy trompa also. Trompa, I have no idea why. It refers to the trunk of an elephant. Estoy trompa. So, you could say, me puse tan pedo en la fiesta que, que tiré los tejos a Mónica. Me puse tan pedo en la fiesta que tiré los tejos a Mónica. You know, I tried to hook up with Mónica. I was so drunk. There's an explanation on the blog of this expression, tirar los tejos. 
it's an interesting thing. You can check it out. Let's move on. We've only got one more here. Me importa tres cojones. We have a lot of things that you can say with cojones in Spanish. Me importa tres cojones. There's lots of other ways of saying this too. It's, I don't give a shit. I don't care at all. You can say, me importa un pimiento, or me importa un bledo. Pimiento is a pepper. I don't care as much as a pepper. I have no idea. Uh, it is as important as a pepper to me. Me importa un pimiento. It means I don't care. There's also, me importa un bledo. A bledo is just a really mediocre looking bush that grows on hilltops. So, me importa un bledo, me importa un pimiento. You can say, me la suda. Me la suda is, I don't know, probably refers to ball sweat or cock sweat or something like that. That's a good one. It means I don't care at all. My favorite one, on the other hand, is me lo paso por el forro de los cojones. Which is, I pass it through the lining of my balls. I have no idea why they say lining. Maybe they're referring to fleece, like the hair on my balls, like a, a fleece like that. It seems like forro is something you always you also use to refer to like the, the fleecy jackets that people have. So yeah, maybe it's a, maybe it's a ball hair, testicle hair thing. Anyway, me lo paso por el forro de los cojones. Is I really do not care at all. I could... Give a flying fuck, possibly. Anyway, that's quite a bit of Spanish profanity. That's the more difficult stuff. There's more basic stuff that I might talk about at some point, but I hope you've had fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope you have a great day wherever you are out there in the world. I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever, wherever it is you're listening to it. Don't forget to comment if possible. Leave me some, uh, some stars on iTunes or Apple Podcasts if that's what you're using. And enjoy. We'll be back with more fun from Spain very soon. Bye.